a video on how you can test your ferret for insulinoma. I tested mine earlier today, so I'm going to go through the steps of what I did, what I use, um, what the number you want in your ferrets, and just everything about testing for insulinoma. You can actually test insulinoma at home if you have the right equipment. So, if you don't know what insulinoma is, it's a blood sugar issue. It's when their blood sugar drops below the danger zone, which I'm going to talk about. And it can cause, like, letharginess and a bunch of other complications. Now, what you can test it with is a glucose monitor. Glucose meaning blood sugar. So, if you get a good quality and you need a good quality glucose monitor, you cannot go for the cheapest ones because they may not be as accurate. But you need a good quality glucose monitor, just like what people use who have diabetes. You might see people like prick their finger and use a little machine. That is a glucose monitor and I have one right here. I'm going to go through it in a second. But basically, when you're feeding something like kibble or feeding that paste that a lot of people use, them foods have extra sugars, it has carbohydrates, all of which is spiking the blood sugar. So when your ferret is eating these kibbles or eating these pastes and treats, their blood sugar, it spikes. And then when they don't eat, it drops. And then when they eat, it spikes. So it's just this up and down, up and down with their blood sugar. Whereas a raw fed ferret who is not getting all these extra sugars, their glucose stays the exact same because there's nothing in raw food that is causing these spikes. Now, the way to tell your ferret has insulinoma is if it drops below the danger zone. So when you get tested for insulinoma, there is a certain number that you want your ferret to be in between. So, mind you, different glucose monitors will measure in different types of measurements. So, some will measure in mg slash dl, and others, such as mine, will measure in mmol slash l. So, I'm going to do the conversions for you. Basically, if you have a monitor that measures in mg, you want your ferret glucose to be anywhere from 65 to 113. That is your range. Anything between that is fine. Anything below 65 is considered the danger zone and it is more likely insulinoma. Then for your MMOL, anything from 3.6 to 6.1 is the good range anything below 3.6 is considered the danger zone so i'm going to pop up a chart here and this is basically the conversion so we have the top row which is the mg and the bottom row is the mmol and basically you're looking for the 65 mg which is the lowest range you can go before it is considered danger and then you look at it for the MMOL and it's 3.6 so that is your conversion that is your range so now let's go on to actually the test kit that I have so this is the monitor I use now you want to make sure you're finding a good monitor you don't want to just go for a cheap monitor as they cannot be as accurate this is the most accurate one that i found online so this is called accucheck and it's a wireless blood glucose monitor and lancing device which i'll get onto so this is your glucose monitor these are your test strips that you do have to buy separately as you can see right here and then i'll show you what a lancing device is so if you're wondering for price, I'm going to tell you what I personally paid. Now, your vet might actually test cheaper, but this I thought was a good investment since 
Ferrets are very prone to it and since I don't really have a vet I can rely on, I thought this would be good to have. So I paid altogether a hundred dollars for everything. Um, so yeah, that's what I paid. It might range where you live. So I'm going to put the box aside and this is what you get. So it's this cute little case. My one's a lot more full because I have the test strips in it and I've obviously added extra. So this is what it looks like and when you get yours, if you get the AccuCheck, you will only get the device, the lancing device and one lancer which I will show you now. So this here is a lancing device and basically this is what um, is used to prick the end of your finger to obviously get blood and the numbers here is how much blood so one is a very small amount and then five is quite a lot and what you use to actually withdraw blood is called a lancet now the kit comes with one lancet which is this and basically this has a needle that comes out and when you install it and then you click down it will prick you now i've never really used this i don't use this method on my ferrets just because you'd have to use their bottom of their pad and i just feel like that would hurt having to walk on it after because you do need a pretty decent amount so i just feel like it would be uncomfortable for them to have to walk on a saw like could you imagine getting a needle in your foot and then having to walk on it it would be quite painful so i will show you the way i do it but yes this is what you call your lancing device and your lancet so i'm going to put this back here this here is your actual device so this is what it looks like it has where you put the test strips which i'll show you in a second um and then to turn it on you simply press ok and then it turns on so this is your main menu ignore the time it is not 4 13 pm i never bothered to set the time when i set it up this is the actual date though so this video is pre-filmed so obviously if you want to test it you would press test and it's going to tell me to insert a test strip which i'm not going to do right now or most devices which this one does as soon as you insert the test strip it will automatically start its thing then you got my data which is cool it does have a logbook so if i were to press ok it will show you the results which i'm not going to show you just yet and then you have averages which this would more so be for a human obviously so I personally don't really look at that because it's several different uh, creatures that I'm testing so if you were obviously using this for yourself you'll get your average but yeah that's all like human type things obviously this is a human monitor and then you got your settings which is like the time in the day and then setting up the wireless options so that is your little machine then in here is your test strip. So I bought 100 test strips for $50. They are very expensive for little strips, but this is what they look like. They come nicely slotted in this little container right here. And I'm going to pull one out. So this is what a test strip looks like. So this metal bit down here is what you would insert into the vice and then this end here where the blood drops are is where you would put your blood so when i stick it into the bottom here the light comes on and as you can see it's already started up so it's saying apply a drop um i'm not going to do it i've already done it and i'm not going to waste test strips because as you just heard these are kind of expensive so that's what you'll do you would apply your droplet and then it will automatically scan and then it will come up so i'm going to put this back so i don't lose it 
So here are my girls' three test strips. I don't know which one's what, but this is dried. I did this a couple hours ago, so it's kind of worn off and it's dried. But yes, this is a pretty good example of what you're supposed to do. So obviously this goes into the device, and this is where you want your blood droplet. Now you do want a good size droplet. So yeah, that is what a test strip looks like. Now, the way I use it, I don't like to use the lancet because, like I said, it would be kind of painful to have to then walk on that. Whereas with us, I mean, we can do it on a finger and we're not putting pressure. But with ferrets, I mean, you would have to use their foot. And I feel like it would be a little bit stingy for a while for them to have to walk on it. So what I do is, during nail trimming, I will preferably use like their smaller nail, which is on this side. And I will ever so slightly nick their quick. Now I don't go so far down that it bleeds a lot. But just enough that it starts to bleed. And then I can get a good amount of blood. Mind you, you do have to make sure the nail or wherever you're choosing to do it is sterile. So I like wash it and then I'll get a little alcohol prep pad and I will sterilize it. So yeah, that is what I do. It works perfectly fine. And that way, because my ferret's nails don't actually touch the floor when they walk, it's not going to bug them by putting pressure on it. So I just feel like that's a bit more of an easier way. And it's a little bit cheaper because you don't have to pay buying lancets. Before you test your ferrets, you have to fast, so don't allow them to eat. For a minimum of four hours, this is so no food can differ the results. Because obviously if you're feeding kibble, that has the extra sugar. So if you were to, say, test it just after they eat, obviously that sugar is going to make them spike. So make sure you're fasting them for a minimum of four hours to ensure nothing is going to disturb their results. So this is my results that I actually got for all three ferrets. Their glucose was really good. So as you can see, the test strip is in there and there's the droplet of blood. This is about the amount you need. And they got 5.3. So let's go back to that chart. So if we look for 5.3 mmol, since that is what my monitor measures in you can see that it's dead smack in the middle for the range so remember for mmol the range was 3.6 to 6.1 so it's pretty dead smack in the middle or if it was for the mg the range is 65 to 113 so my ferrets are healthy and there's no sign of insulinoma which is great so I test them about twice a year, which is good.